welcome to Tesla info and today we're going to have a look at real world range and how it compares to the EPA rating the EPA rating is the number that Tesla show on the website it's different in Europe they use WLTP but EPA is the one that Tesla has most confidence in one question we get asked is where we get our data from and the API actually returns a bunch of information which we then convert into uh, a variety of figures and if you use the facility on the website all this gets laid out and explained to you including benchmarks um, we keep basic information of each of the results to be able to provide fleet analytics which is essentially what you're looking at now we also offer some advice on how to correct it if your car is particularly poor at the moment the API provides us with a projected range which is calculated based on the real world average performance of the car over the last 30 miles. Taking that we can work out what the real world range would be at 100% battery. Let's look at some real data starting with the Model 3 standard range across all years. Whilst this looks very similar to the battery degradation charts, the main difference is the y-axis is now miles based on EPA range for the amount of available energy in the battery. So it's been corrected for degradation in the battery. In essence, this is the number you will see at the top of the screen when you've charged to 100%. The next chart we're going to take a look at is how the rated range compares to the real world range as reported by the car. We've popped a line on to show you where 100% is, so that's where the real world range exactly matches the rated range. And we can see actually for the standard range cars, real world is almost exactly the rated range. Yes. You know on a day by day basis you can have up to a plus or minus 30 percent swing depending on driving conditions the key takeaway however is that on an average over time the epa range does seem to match exactly what people are experiencing in the real world the final chart we've got actually shows the real world range and how that declines with battery degradation um, over 50,000 miles it does seem to drop off a little bit which is a bit odd because that implies the accuracy is falling but that could be a BMS calibration issue. If we switch and look at the Model Y standard range again we sort of see the same chart and again we see almost a hundred percent match. You know, We haven't got thousands and thousands of data points here but there's still a good hundred or so data points. If we now switch to the Model 3 long range Again, we've got the uh, rated range on the y-axis at this point, and we can see how they sort of falls off as the battery degrades. And again, we've got the line at 100%. And this time, the cars are in general reporting about a 5% uh, shortfall on the EPA range for some reason. We can't really offer an explanation why the long-range cars will be 5% off, but the standard ranges aren't. Maybe it's a calibration issue or self-balancing because the long range cars aren't charged to 100% as much as the standard range cars are. Uh, if we switch to the Model Y long range, we see almost exactly the same result as the Model 3, about a 95% accuracy or a 5% shortfall. Um, it should also be noted that the average rated and the average real world ranges we're displaying um, are for all the data points we've got, including cars with slightly different batteries. Um, the battery type doesn't really make much difference in the calculation here. That said, you're unlikely to get exactly the same figures we've shown on the chart. Um, one point that's been raised before is looking at different factories. If we look at Fremont and all the Model 3s made there, that is also about 94-95% accurate, so there's not really a factory element to this. There also doesn't seem to be much of a change um, as you go to high mileage. And if we compare to China made cars, it's about 1% higher, which is probably a rounding accuracy. We wouldn't say there was much in the, in the results. If we look at the performance cars or the Model 3 performance, we see there's a, a bigger drop off. It's now a 9% gap between the EPA rating and the real world. And we can only think this is because people tend to enjoy the Model 3 performance cars, 
as you should do really um, but that's not something that the EPA tests reflect that said if we look at the model Y performance um, we see actually it's pretty close in fact actually the model Y performance is closer than the model Y long range and maybe people that buy those cars just like it for the bigger wheels they don't actually make the most of the performance as much we do have a little bit of data of 50,000 miles but there's so few data points it's not really worth drawing any significance from them so that's the model 3 and model y and 95 to 99 percent accuracy is pretty good for the epa figures i'm going to take a look at the model s and x 75 batteries um, from predating the 21 uh, facelift the palladium program we can see the epa range varies quite a bit sometimes that's to do with the different models sometimes it's to do with wheel size but when we look at the um, accuracy of the EPA we see it's actually 15% off which is quite significant it's hard to know really why they'd be so far off uh, maybe EPA ratings have improved and got more accurate over time certainly if we look at the same uh, data for the 100 kilowatt hour battery packs the 100D and the P100D we see it's also about 15% off it's worth remembering that the any battery degradation that's happened has been taken out of both the rated and the real world range here this is what the cars can actually deliver and how accurate to the number that the car thinks it's got in terms of range the car can actually achieve when we look at the data above 50,000 miles you know we haven't got that many data points about half of them here um, it doesn't really change much where things do get a little odd is if we look at the 2021 plus model s 100d we get the similar sort of results of 15 percent shortfall if we take a look at the model x 100d um, from the 2022 facelift it gets a little weird because this time it's 95 uh, percent accurate if we take a look at the model s plaid and yes it's plaid not played i have been corrected and here's an example where you can see the effect of the different wheel size actually um we're down to 18 percent inaccuracy and again this must be down to people enjoying the performance of the plaid i'm a little loath to show the model x plaid figures because there's so few data points but the ones we have got are showing an average of about a seven percent shortfall which is a similar sort of improvement um, as we saw with the long range uh, cars and if we take a look at all the palladium cars so these are all the cars that were built from 2021 with the new yoke steering wheel and so forth the fleet average for all of those cars is about a 10 percent shortfall um, on the real world range compared to the epa range so to conclude if you're looking at a model 3 or model y the epa range is pretty accurate in the real world especially if you're looking at the standard range the ratings on four year old plus model s and model x car seems to be a little bit off um, and while it gets a little bit better on the model x in recent years the model s still seems to be off even today and if you have a performance car and enjoy the performance you're not going to get anywhere near the rated range what it does say however is the number at the top of the screen for most cars is actually pretty accurate despite it having a bad press over the years i hope this video has been useful and you can do your own battery degradation calculations on our website and catch you next time